A Few Bites by Cybelle Young It was time to eat. Viola made lunch for her brother, Ferdy. It was broccoli, carrot sticks, and ravioli. Ferdy, come and eat before it gets cold. Ferdy was looking for a special part for his fighter ship. It was gray and square with four bumps on it. Viola promised to help him find it right after lunch, so he sat down at the table. Ferdy scowled at his plate. Pointing to his broccoli, he said, What's this? I'm definitely not eating it. No, thank you. I'm not even hungry. Just try a few bites, pleaded Viola, but he shook his head. That's actually dinosaur food, Viola continued. It was around during the Cretaceous, and if you were a dinosaur, you would have had to eat 5,000 of those broccoli every day. That's the only way you would have been strong enough to climb mountains and scale volcanoes and run through dense forests fast enough to escape the fiercest predators. And even if a gigantosaurus did catch up to you, the broccoli would have made you so smart that you could figure out how to capture it. Then I would be the top boss of all the dinosaurs, Ferdy exclaimed. So the boss decided to come back to the table. He ate one, two, three bites. Ferdy looked at his carrots and sneered. I'm absolutely not eating those. Thanks, but no thanks, he put down his fork. I guess you don't want to be like the Zyblot aliens, said Viola. They spend their lives searching the galaxy far and wide for one thing and one thing only. Orange power sticks. Zyblots suck them up through their vacuum trumpets. Then they get supervision and can see past every asteroid, moon, and planet in their solar system, way into the next solar system, far, far away. And orange power sticks fire their spacecraft to the far end of their galaxy, maybe farther, and then all the way back home. That's how they plan to dominate the universe. Alien Ferdablot landed safely to stock upon power sticks. He ate every single one of them. Ferdy looked at the ravioli. He could see that it was cold. He looked at Viola. He looked at the floor and didn't move. Viola sighed and began, deep down in the sea, ten thousand fathoms at least, darker than any place you've ever known, is buried the key to the greatest mystery in the history of the world. The only one who knows the way is the flashlight fish. He's the smartest and fastest and can light the way through the darkest crevices. He can dodge the wild jellyfish's sting, swerve around spiked eels, and even trick the great glowing devil shark. And when he finds the key, Viola paused. When he finds the key, he... When he finds the key, he does nothing, and I don't even know what that key is for. Viola couldn't think of one more thing to say except, Please, Ferdy, just finish the last few bites. Ferdy asked to be excused. Viola reminded him that he would get no dessert. She plugged in her earphones and sat down, plop, in the big armchair. Ferdy began to sort through his toys. After a while, Viola looked up. What are you making? she asked. It's a strawberry chocolate swirl caramel explosion surprise cake with extra whipped cream and a cherry on top. Mmm, sounds good. Can I have some? They each had a few bites. Then Viola said, Ferdy, let's find that special part for your fighter ship. The End for more children's stories rescued from library dustbins, subscribe and keep coming back.